Brothers and sisters, it's good to be with you and to open God's Word together. Uh, today we want to look at the book of Jude, the letter of Jude. It's a, a short letter. It doesn't have uh, chapters. It's just in terms of verses, kind of like Second and Third John. And so uh, since it's relatively short, let's read the whole uh, book together. So I want to think about the letter of Jude. This is God's own word. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who are called, beloved in God the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed and the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desire, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. Yet in like manner, these people also, relying on their dreams, defile the flesh, reject authority, and blaspheme the glorious ones. But when the archangel Michael, contending with the devil, was disputing about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these people blaspheme all that they do not understand, and they are destroyed by all that they, like unreasoning animals, understand instinctively. Woe to them, for they walked in the way of Cain and abandoned themselves for the sake of gain to Balaam's error and perished in Korah's rebellion. These are hidden reefs at your love feasts, as they feast with you without fear, shepherds feeding themselves, waterless clouds swept along by winds, fruitless trees in late autumn, twice dead, uprooted, wild waves of the sea, casting up the foam of their own shame, wandering stars, for whom the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved forever. It was also about these that Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict all the ungodly of their deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, malcontents, following their own sinful desires. They are loud-mouthed boasters, showing favoritism to gain advantage. But you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, in the last time there will be scoffers, following their own ungodly passions, it is these who cause divisions, worldly people, devoid of the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. That's a wonderful letter that Jude has written and worth meditating over. Um, we don't know a whole lot about Jude. He identifies himself here as a uh, servant of Jesus and a brother of James. Uh, we think that that means James here, James the Just, which would be the brother of Jesus, uh, which would make Jude another brother of Jesus's. Um, and all we know from um, the, the testimony of Scripture is that uh, Jesus' brothers initially did not believe in him, um, but that they later became, uh, after his resurrection, became 
followers of his, so that seems to be the case with Jude. Uh, he clearly says that he is not an apostle. Um, he talks about the apostles and says, remember what they said to us. Uh, so he doesn't rank himself among the apostles, but he has written a powerful and important book here about how to persevere. Uh, we're also not sure to whom he's writing this book. Um, it doesn't sound, uh, he doesn't identify an audience when he writes like some of the authors do. Uh, so it's a little difficult to know uh, to whom he's writing. A lot of people have uh, argued that he's writing to the same people Peter was writing to in Asia Minor uh, because a lot of the things that Peter warned them about um, seem to be happening in Jude's day. Uh, so, uh, for example, Second Peter 3, verse 3, uh, Peter said, Knowing this, first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires. So he warns of scoffers. Um, and what does Jude say in verses 17 and 18? Well, they said to you in the last time there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. Uh, so it's almost as if he's saying, remember, Peter warned us this would happen, and it's now happening um, in our midst, just like he, he warned us of. Um, where we can think of Second Peter 2, uh, verse 1, the warning about false teachers. Uh, false prophets also arose among the people, Peter says, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Uh, what does Jude say uh, in Jude verse 4? Uh, he talks about these same kinds of people coming in. Um, certain people have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of our Lord and of our God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so a lot of people have kind of associated Jude with Second Peter in the sense that Jude seems to be dealing with the reality that Peter prophesied uh, about in many ways. And so the theme and the content of the book is pretty straightforward. Jude is urging believers to contend for the faith once for all delivered to the saints um, and warns them against apostasy and about, it warns them against falling away uh, from the true faith and following after uh, other things. So he was, says, I was eager to write you uh, about our common salvation, but I found it necessary to write appealing to you for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. Um, and we still use that phrase quite a bit from Jude uh, 3, uh, to contend for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And so if we were to try to outline uh, this little letter together, um, we could begin by saying the introductions in the first two verses. Uh, there's the address and the, and the blessing that's pronounced. Uh, we still use that blessing in our worship services. Um, and then Jude talks about their danger and his reason for writing in verses 3 through 7. Uh, again, he calls them to contend for the faith in verse 3. He warns them that ungodly men have crept in who are vile and deny Christ. Uh, verse 4, and he talks about the doom of such men, uh, the warnings of history given about uh, the fate that awaits these kinds of people. Um, and then in, in the bulk of the letter, verses 8 through 23, he talks about how it's our duty to recognize these, type, these types of men as those not to be listened to or followed. Um, then he describes them in verses 8 through 6, 16, um, walking after lust for the sake of their own advantage. Um, and there's a lot of you know, really vivid imagery in the describing of them. Uh, they're hidden reefs at your love feast. You know, a hidden reef was very dangerous if you were ship-going people. Um, your ship could run aground on a hidden reef. And so that, that was a danger that lurked under the surface. So there's a lot of vivid imagery. Um, they're like crashing waves and the foam is their shame. Um, there's a lot of vivid imagery in there about what kind of wicked people they're to keep their eye out for um, and how they're to respond uh, to this kind of wickedness. Uh, they're to remember what the apostles had said, verses 17 to 19. Uh, they're to build themselves up in the faith. Uh, they're to pray to the Holy Spirit. Uh, they're to keep in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ and caring for those around them, showing mercy to those who doubt, snatching others from the fire to others showing uh, mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by flesh. So there are all those different reminders of how to respond to the various people in our care. And then the beautiful doxology uh, that ends Jude of what, um, how the Lord is to be praised uh, for the God who's given it. Um, a couple other features of this book that we notice from time to time is how Jude will bring in references to things that aren't mentioned elsewhere in Scripture. Uh, they might have been common, um, commonly known stories from 
uh, the people around him, so he might be just using those stories to illustrate his point. Uh, but the point he's making is obviously very clear. There are all kinds of people that deceive in all kinds of ways. And God's people are to cling to the reliable faith of the word of Scripture. And in every generation, there is the danger that people come along and corrupt true doctrine um, by teaching truths that are not truths, uh, or corrupt, try to corrupt our lives by teaching us that we can live in ways uh, that we are not to live according to God's word, and teach us to worship in ways that we should not worship. And one of the things that Jude helpfully reminds us of is uh, God's word is sufficient to teach us everything we need to believe, uh, everything we need to know for doctrine, everything we need to know to live, to serve God in our lives. God has revealed in his word, and everything we need to know to worship has been revealed in God's word. And so anytime someone else comes along and says, well, there's a new truth or a new way of life or a new way to worship, that we should say, no, there is no new doctrines. There are no new ways of life. Uh, the commandment is an old and reliable one. Uh, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. And when people bring these other things, what we have to do is contend for the faith that has been once for all delivered to the saints. Uh, that, that word that, that tells us about doctrine and life and worship has been laid down securely in God's word. And if anyone else comes bringing a different doctrine or teaching a different kind of life or advocating for another kind of worship, uh, we are to say, no, God's word is sufficient and we are going to contend with the things that he has delivered to us. And so Ju Jude is really doing us a great service here by reminding us of that great truth, that we have, we have received uh, the, the truth in God's word. And we are to contend for that truth against all the pretenders that would come and try to teach other ways. And so we ought to rest secure in what God has given to us. So this is an important little book, um, and we should pray that God would help us to do what Jude instructs us to do here. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we do pray that you would protect your church from uh, those who would creep in and sow uh, weeds of heresy and discord among your people. We pray that we would be content to be those people who contend for the faith that's been once for all delivered to the saints. We know that your word is true. It's reliable. It teaches us everything we need to believe, all the ways in which we need to live, and everything we need to do to worship you. And there will be people who have come, as they've come in every generation, trying to uh, upset that balance that your word has given to us, teaching us things that are not your truth, uh, advocating for ways of life that are uh, not pleasing to you and evil in your sight, and advocating for forms of worship that you have neither required nor demanded of us. And so we're so thankful, Lord, to have your word that is sufficient for everything we need to know to live this life before your face, that we can rely on it and see that its word is proven true, even in the prophecies that Peter made seem true in Jude's day. Uh, we can be reminded again that the word is reliable and true. So help us, Father, to contend for the faith once for all delivered to the saints and help us to continue to respond as you would have us to respond and as your word directs us over and over again um, to keep in prayer, to keep in the word, uh, to build ourselves up in the most holy faith, to keep ourselves in your love and to wait for the mercy of of our Lord Jesus that waits for that leads to eternal life. Lord, give us the patience to wait on Christ, and in the meantime to listen to his word and to contend for it always. Hear our prayers, Lord, and receive our thanks, for we offer them in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, people of God, it's been good to spend this time with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again.